Imagine just driving down the highway, minding your own business, doing your job, and then all of a sudden you get shot not once, not twice, but three times. That's what happened to F.A. He's a local truck driver, and tonight he is laid up in this hospital, thankful that he's alive. Virtual reality campus tour isn't new. In fact, Texas A&M has been doing it for quite some time, but now they want to take you around the world, and all you need is a phone, and if you want the full experience, a pair of goggles. We've gotten some beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, you name it. We got it. You have to really name that one. As you know, tonight's debate is being held at historically black Texas Southern University, and among the attendees in the audience, there is a strong student present. Family, faith, and friends, and that's just a testament to the type of person that Mrs. Bush was. There's been signs posted for nearly a year about the change. They've even put letters in the cemetery mailbox. It's so hard to hear you because everyone in here is going off the chain. It's been so surreal, Carla, to see what damage that this EF3 tornado can do to this community and these homes. And I saw, I saw the, when the car sped up, I just I said to myself, that was the guy that shot me. F.A., a truck driver from Austin, says he never thought in a million years he'd be here. When stuff like this happened, I just say to myself, oh, another shooting again. This, it becomes a numb thing, like a normal thing. One of the 22 injured in a shooting rampage that rocked Midland, Odessa, Saturday. It just, I didn't know where the bullet was coming from. You know, people just ran on me, just pop, 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 pop. The bullet ripped through his hand, arm, and chest. A piece of shrapnel still lodged in his lungs. I don't know why people would just pick up a gun and randomly keep people. The only thing he says that kept him alive was the thought of his wife and children. But I kept my car, you know, thinking about my kids and wife. Just kept my car. Yeah, you know, he says that the, the doctors tell him he will make a full recovery. However, that shrapnel, those pieces of bullet that are lodged in his lungs will be there for quite some time. For now, in Midland, Whitney Miller, News 3. In this Creekview Elementary Classroom in College Station. Standing desks, I have peddlers. You'll find Elizabeth Englehart busy getting ready for the first day of school. Lots of puzzles and some organization things. And like many educators with a looming deadline, there's a little bit of anxiety, but there's mainly a whole bunch of excitement. Anxiety because both Elizabeth and her coworker Abby Foskey, I got a home for Bird, are trying to make sure their students have all the supplies they need. It's those extra things that we think are going to help our kids that are it's coming out of our budget. A budget, yes color code everything that many teachers in districts across the country don't have. I think we had $50 and that was to basically anything that you needed in your room. Enter Amazon. When you get a package on the, on the doorstep, it's kind of like those oh my gosh moments. A teacher in Beaumont started an online Facebook group called Support a Teacher. It's a forum that shares thousands of teachers Amazon wish lists from all over the country, encouraging members to buy and send. It's really neat that you're getting that interaction with other educators. And what started as teachers helping teachers is quickly growing to generous people looking to help. God has blessed me with a salary that I can't complain about and I won't complain about. So if I can bless other people with that, then that's what I need to do. In College Station, Whitney Miller, News 3. This woman that you're about to meet says that if she had not stopped by her friend's house for a visit, her daughter who was sleeping in this room right here might not have made it. If you're looking for tornado damage in Franklin, look no further than the flag. This is the, tr the truck. Kayla Smith says the flag on this home was erected Sunday when friends and family returned to clean up what's left of her best friend's home. Her dad is a veteran and that is why that flag is flying high for him. She was visiting Saturday when an EF3 tornado ripped through their community. Four adults and two children were huddled in a small bathroom. We grabbed the girls, we ran down the hall to the bathroom, and honestly, we just started praying. A roof gone, cars crushed, another tossed and flipped in the yard. So this car doesn't even belong with this property. Kayla says they're grateful just to be able to share their story. Half these people over here helping, they don't even live over here. They're just here to, to help. 
Yeah, you know, Kayla told me that she is just in awe of the community and how they've come together. I've seen food trucks. I've seen kids who are not in school today helping cut down trees for people. Churches that have opened their doors. It's been completely refreshing to see, especially in the midst of all the things that have happened here in Franklin. For now, live, Whitney Miller, News 3. Me, my brother and sister. Right off the bat, Joshua Butron shared his pain. Oh, is it? And out of he and his siblings had a rough childhood, born in San Antonio and raised by an aunt in Colleen. He says his earliest childhood memories are dark, but he has a way of coping. He uses the gym and shadow boxing to relieve his anger. Yeah, I, I can still remember that day. 24 years ago, he found out his mother, Mary Ann Butron, was killed. And she said, yes, your mom's dead. That was in 1995. Marianne's body was found on a dead end street along FM 2818 near Highway 6 in Bryan. Investigators say she was brutally murdered. Her family believes she was visiting town with another man. Only recently did Joshua learn his mother was pregnant at the time of her uh, death. It hurts because the dude that did it. Away from me. He says even though their relationship was strained, he's still deeply affected by her loss. I feel empty inside. This guy took a piece of my heart. The Brazos County Sheriff's Office is working to find the killer. They're resubmitting more than 100 pieces of evidence for DNA testing. Hope they, they do have a match. 24 going on 25 years not knowing nothing and finding something, it's worth it. He believes knowing will help him heal. In San Antonio, Whitney Miller, News 3. We're grateful. We're grateful that we're, we're still here. It like took that. Tina Villanueva and her family six months to get back in their home on West Colorado Street. When nobody knew it was going to get that high. Now her home is safely perched on concrete block pillars. But this time last year, Tina and her neighbors were underwater. The water got into six or seven feet inside the house. It covered the doors inside the house. She says they were completely blindsided when the storm swept away all her precious memories. My husband said, don't worry about it. It's not going to get that high. Mm -hmm. So we didn't take nothing out, whatever, just a few clothes or whatever, and I lost everything. As painful as it was to lose those mementos, there were others in the community nearby that weren't nearly as lucky. Before the storm hit last year, more than 300 families lived in this community. Now there's only empty lots and families that did come back. The city believes maybe 30, they live in FEMA trailers like this one. So now this is her kitchen. Okay. It's been a year and Tina says they're finally putting on the finishing touches. Do you fear that it could happen again? Yes. Yeah. I do fear that. But even still, she says, LaGrange is home. What keeps you here? Family. All my family lives here and his family lives here. In LaGrange, Whitney Miller, News 3.